very good morning once again i very heartily welcome those of you who have logged in today because unlike in the other uh, weeks or other saturdays today we are talking about a topic which normally sounds very boring very sort of sarmanish that you know okay some gyan is going to be given somebody is going to talk about something morals and moralizing and all that we've heard that enough and if at all we want to hear it we'd rather hear it from an accomplished guru or somebody who has made you know reach somewhere a seer or somebody who is ali to tell us about moral values principles all these things i agree with you in fact i want to tell you that i am not going to be talking about morals today if you notice the topic it is values and principles and values and principles are totally different from morals let me clarify that and then i'll move on to values morals is something which is imposed on us by society or by religion or by community or whatever you want to call it so you will find that people will tell children this is immoral this is not what you should do this is a sin this will land you in hell this is not what you are supposed to be doing now whether the person agrees with it or not you have to abide by the morals of society and the interesting thing is what is moral in one society may be immoral in another society they don't even look at that it could be something as simple as style of dressing and it's always women's dresses which are commented upon never men's dresses so in one particular society or one particular area one particular culture you may find that a woman or a girl dressing in a particular way is labeled as immoral look at her in another society the same thing is very freely accepted same thing with let's say boy girl relationships man woman relationship public uh, display of affection going all the way down to things like corruption there are areas where you know something is supposed to be corruption and therefore immoral there are other areas where people quote and say everybody cheats on income tax cutting corners here and there is a normal thing i am not uh, one big scamster who is uh, you know evading hundreds of crores of uh, taxes a few thousands here and there means a lot to me it means nothing to the government on the other hand there will be somebody who will say no that is immoral if you are a citizen of this country and if laws have been made and if you do not adhere to those uh, laws then you are supposed to be an immoral uh, person so one more thing about morality is that we tend to you know compare ourselves with it now with the political situation being very strong haven't you been noticing one party accuses another of wrong doing whether it is corruption or whatever you want to call it immediately the other one says you have done worse things or you are doing worse uh, uh, things they do not clarify that no we are not doing something you know which is uh, supposed to be unethical or uh, uh, immoral they just keep on going on with a ping pong battle that this is right that is wrong all these things so that's why as i told you i am not going to talk today about morals let us leave that to the seers and to people who really understand <coughs> ethics and the higher uh, self what i am going to talk about compared to that is about values and in that i am going to be very specific starting with the fundamental thing which i very strongly believe in that is that there are values of being and values of giving i'll clarify that in a minute but let me give you one of the best definitions of values that i have come across it says values give meaning and direction to our existence and shape our ways of being and acting they are an integral part of who we are and guide us through our daily lives 
our decisions, our actions, and our relationships. They can originate from within or they can be transmitted or imposed on us through the upbringing. Anyway, this is what I want to uh, you know, help you to understand. When I say values of being, values of being is a person who says that I am a very God-fearing person. I am a person who surrenders myself to the creator or to the supernatural. I am a person who maintains very good hygiene. I am a person who does these, these, this. Good, very good for you. But these values or these principles may govern your life. They don't affect others. It doesn't make a difference to anybody else, whether you are an atheist or whether you are a God-fearing person, whether you maintain the best of hygiene or you don't do or you maintain the best of health or you know discipline in your daily routine or you are a person who is totally relaxed and you go by you know, relaxed uh, means these things do not you know affect other maybe one or two very close people but not generally to uh, the uh, others also remember that there are some people who are so principled that they tend to hurt others. A parent, for example, is so strict and adhering to such clear norms that this is bad, this is wrong, this you should not do. And the child wants to cut corners in small ways and says that, no, I want to do this, I want to do that. But the parent is very rigid. A teacher can be equally rigid. And what happens because of that is that people, you know, grow up getting hurt because of the principles of uh, others. The, a typical instance which you would, you would have seen in Bollywood, Sandalwood movies also is that, you know, here there is this youngster who's studied very hard, who's qualified, in, but he's not getting a job. So he tells his father, you know, so and so very well. Why don't you put in a word? If you put in a word, you know, the, I'll definitely get a proper job. The father is a very principled man. He upholds the highest of what he calls as ethics. He says, no, for my son, I am not going to seek favors. He says, but you asked the same person for a job for another person. Yeah, he was a poor man. He needed the job badly and I had no vested interest. So that's why I told uh, uh, him that please consider and whatever he would have done. But for my own son, I'm not going to do it. Now you see how this person who considers himself a very principled person, who for, you know, upholds the highest of uh, values. But in fact, he is hurting others. And particularly a lot of people who are dependent on him or who are connected to him. So if we look at it the other way around, let us talk about what we call as values of giving. Take a simple thing like a person who has acquired a lot of knowledge, something about the higher self or something about whatever it may uh, be. There will be one sannyasi who will go and sit on the top of Himalayas and meditate for the rest of his life. He is seeking moksha. He may get it also. I don't know much about it, but he may actually uh, you know, get it. But how is his knowledge? How is his wisdom helping other people? He refuses to meet people. He says, no, I have taken a Mandrata. I'm going to be sitting over there. I don't want to talk to anybody. Compare that with another person who understands that these are the needs of poor people, or these are the needs of children, or these are the needs of old people. And he spends a lot of his time reaching out to such people trying to make their quality of life a little uh, better. So the first one has what I define as values of being. As a being, he has certain values. The second one has what I would define as values of giving. Now, I am rich enough. I have enough money to take care of myself. So I would rather help others who are struggling. I have certain knowledge which other people have not been fortunate enough to have. So I will spread that knowledge to them. These are what I would call as 
values of uh, you know giving and let me also clarify over here that when i say values of giving i'm not talking about material things there are a lot of people who are very charitable they go about giving arms and charity and free food to somebody your clothes to somebody your scholarships to somebody excellent i really appreciate such philanthropists who do such good work but that's not what we are talking about today today we are talking about values of giving in a non material uh, sense and that is where the things become difficult for example if you are forced to tell a lie to save a friend of yours who would get into trouble he has done some minor dis- misdemeanor he is going to get himself in trouble which is going to be far disproportionate to whatever wrong he has done he is going to get himself into trouble if you tell a lie that can save him now you being a principled person may say i don't want to tell lies i can't help it if this man is going to be in trouble because of this but i am not going to tell a lie i am not saying which is right and which is wrong i am leaving it to you to reflect is saving the future or saving the unnecessary exorbitant punishment of a known person more important to you or is upholding your own principles holding your head up high raising your collar and saying i never tell lies which of these two is important to, uh, uh, to you now if you have a cause to work for if you have a purpose if you have a mission which goes beyond your primary needs of your own self or your own family's uh, um, self that is what makes life worthwhile people who care for their country for example patriots people who say that i want my country and every citizen to prosper i want my country to progress i will contribute in whatever little way to ensure that my country and my people are benefiting from uh, it coming back it could be you know the uh, decision to help let's say your immediate surroundings your locality it could be helping all the elderly people in your area are known to you because they have become too old to take care of themselves or to earn and you say that this is my mission it could even be taking care of your old parents your own parents but you decide that i am going to definitely take time off i am going to help my parents to whatever extent i can but like the controversy i told you no let's say this person has got a wife and children and they say that you are neglecting us because you are spending all your time with your parents now what is the value what is the principle what is the moral in it there may be a moral which says that your primary duty is towards your parents that is external that is superimposed on you by some society or scriptures or whatever it is but deep down inside if you question yourself you have to find the answer to yourself but as i told you if primarily you are a person who understands the values of giving such people even in a tight situation like this can find ways and means to some extent you know satisfy the needs of both sides the parents and the uh, wife and children and that is where this question you know comes in that if you have that attitude of giving to uh, people that is what becomes very very uh, important i'll give you an example i have a friend who was once occupying a very high position in government and annually they have to take a decision at some recruitment or something like that where a lot of corruption happens the method that is followed by his uh, the government is not a very uh, straight forward one they go by bribes they go by recommendation they go by so many thing now he is the person who finally signs the approval 
he's in that seat you know what he told me he said yaar i cannot indulge in corruption i cannot bear to see wrong things happening i will never affix my signature to something which i consider as unethical so you know what i do every year when i know that this point is coming where this particular <coughs> action has to be taken i take leave for a few days and i take my family and go away for a vacation now the person who's holding charge in my absence he signs the file i come back and i continue with my work remember that even when he takes leave he has got all the perks whether it is salary or benefits or whatever else he is entitled to as a top official he is not forsaking that he is just giving up on taking the responsibility of signing that particular uh, uh, file which he knows is unethical immoral whatever you want to uh, you know to uh, give the uh, title to one thing that i have seen which i want to um, emphasize upon is that you may think in today's world values don't matter nobody cares for it nobody bothers in fact people put you down they say you know where is this uh, you know harish chandra come from why is he making things uh, uh, miserable why is he doing this and that that does happen i don't deny it but it doesn't always happen remember <clears throat> there are always some people who will appreciate what you're doing and that those people should be important to you those people should be part of your inner circuit and those people should matter to you if you are consistent if you have that holding capacity to whatever extent you can win over that today what i decided is that every uh, saturday instead of you staring at my face all the time for one hour i thought every saturday we will invite one guest just for a couple of minutes or whatever it is to share at a practical level what he or she thinks about this uh, uh, topic which is being discussed in that week and what have been that person's experiences so you get a wider uh, you know perspective on whatever we are discussing so today i have invited suresh he has had a very checkered life he has been a very successful engineer then marketing person whatever he has done a lot of things in life he has gone into very meaningful education and now he is a counselor with us so i thought i'll just ask suresh to quickly share with you what has been his experiences vis-a-vis -vis values and principles here is suresh for you very good morning and uh, i would like to uh, just start off with uh, a small and you know, a half a minute story kind of thing uh, once upon a time you know say possibly a decade or uh, three two two three decades back most of the families had uh, you know between 15 or 20 uh, kind of people in the family so the world was that for them and uh, whenever the youngsters used to face some problem we used to go back to our elders and elders used to find um, a lot of solutions through their principles and values and uh, but now we don't seem to have that luxury uh, the extended family or the elders you know in fact uh, i was i grew up without my uh, grandparents around or an extended family around so the elimination of that in between space um, leaves us in a position where the principles and values are too far away from us uh, so the thing that i would like to uh, look at is that when i when i was thinking about my principles and values um, i had to really bring it closer to me so you know we don't have anybody to go to so we probably have to bring the principles and values closer to us and uh, to it's it means that we have to start off everything uh, from scratch so where do i start from you know where do i really form up my principles where do i form up my values and uh, then if i think about it then i would like to see uh, you know people who my value in life and possibly look at people who are common uh, 
I, I'll possibly talk about people who are uh, uh, known commonly to you and me. So I'll take an example of uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam. If you really think of him, you know, if you close your eyes and think of him, he's such a humble and sweet and nice and kind person. You know, probably the current day uh, Gandhiji could simply come and sit with us. Um, so his uh, principles and values were honesty and self-discipline, which he got it from his father and goodness and kindness from his mother. So this is what he's, uh, you know, he's followed in his life. And if you look at him, uh, he's somebody come from a very humble background. He, he used to get up at three o'clock, you know, when he was a kid and put papers in different houses. Um, so such a simple man holding himself, uh, whether somebody is watching or not, having an absolute self-discipline uh, made a big difference for the way he did his work. And similarly, if you consider uh, somebody, you know, in sports, somebody like Dhoni or Sachin, uh, you know, for example, if he takes Dhoni, you know, he's, he's taken such a simple life. You know, he, if you really look at him, you feel that he's a simple man. And uh, he keeps telling in all of his interviews, you know, keep it simple. And his uh, principles were be, be honest to yourself. Uh, you know, he used to always look at what he can do and what he can't do. And then he used to work towards, um, you know, correcting or training himself what uh, he finally can uh, go and do on that. So his principles were honesty and acceptance. Um, so like this, you know, somebody that we know, we like, if you are able to go back to them and uh, really uh, hold those principles and uh, values within us strongly, uh, it would do a great uh, health. Fantastic, fantastic. I think that's quite a bit of food for uh, uh, thought. And I'm glad that, uh, you know, you've got a different perspective. It's not always what Ali has to say. There are a lot of people, even among our own Banjarites, who have a lot of very good things to say. Anyway, uh, before I end the first half of uh, the session and we have this open house, I would like to give you a simple little exercise. Okay. I have listed down a few things which Anis has made into a slide. And here it is for uh, uh, you. If you can read the heading, values of being affect only us. I clarified that. But values of be giving affect others. So we need to understand the difference and not get carried away only by values of being. We should understand how much of the values of giving we are into. And that really helps uh, us to lead a better quality of life and to have better relationships. Now, here is a uh, long list of what you can consider as principles or values or whatever uh, um, it is. It's not a very strict, uh, this thing. Some of them you may debate and say, no, these are not values, these are not principles. So let's not go by the labels and stuff like that. Let's look at these characteristics that I have listed out. Faith, you know, a person with a deep faith or whatever you want to call it. Sense of humor. It's debatable whether that's a principle or value or not. High quality work, always efficient, always doing perfectionism or something like that. Kindness, performance, I ensure that my performance is done to the uh, end of whatever is expected. Compassion, genuineness, I will not be a hypocrite, I will always be genuine. Loyalty. So here as you go down this list, if you want you can even photograph this and keep it for you so that you can go through it uh, uh, later or as you know this FB remains even after we have finished the program, you can log into uh, Facebook anytime and you can go back to it. So I would request you to take some time off today, this week, next week, whenever it is possible to first go through this particular uh, list and identify which are the ones which are values of being 
and which are the ones which are values of giving. And the more you practice the second one, that is values of giving, the better will be your quality of life, your relationships, and your fulfillment and satisfaction in life. Just to make it a little easier, I have put it into two columns. Okay. Generally, I would say that the right side column, that is the words which are in red color, lean more towards values of giving. And the ones which are in black on the left, lean more towards values of being. So that is what I want you to you know, understand. I am not making a statement that this is absolutely right. That's why I'm saying they lean towards. I'm not saying that they are values of being or values of uh, giving. Take a simple thing like honesty. Okay. Now, honesty can be within myself. And I've written a booklet on that called Emotional Honesty. That means, are my emotions in congruence with my thoughts on this side and my actions on the other side? That is Emotional Honesty, which is an intrinsic quality. Whereas, honesty in dealing with others, money matters, commitments, promises, whatever uh, it is. That is an interpersonal trait. Now, intrinsic traits build up your values of being. Interpersonal traits build up your values of giving. So you must have a right balance of the two. And you have to decide which are values of being and which are values of giving, which are intrinsic qualities and which are interpersonal qualities. As in every aspect of human behavior, there is no clear dividing line. Let me also tell you something very interesting, which I have been observing since a very long time. You know, like great people always have proverbs which are quoted by people. I'm not a great person. I don't even know whether my uh, proverb will be quoted <clears throat> at all. But let me give you my own little proverb. The worst sin is the one that I don't commit. I repeat. The worst sin is the one that I don't commit. If I don't drink alcohol, it becomes so easy for me to condemn people who drink. I can look down upon them. I can, you know, believe that they are no good, all these things. On the other hand, if I happen to be even a social drinker and somebody is talking about this habit of alcohol and they're saying, no, it is bad. It's okay, yeah. I mean, once in a while, what's wrong with having a drink? If somebody drinks once in a while, he's a social drinker. How does it make a difference? Why should we, you know, look down upon people and why should we criticize them? You saw the difference? Just because I do something. That is what, you know, is very strong in many of us. And I want to leave you with this, you know, introspection on this thought that... If you start believing in values and principles purely on your behavior habits. I have, let's say, led a very comfortable life financially, economically. So I don't feel the need on cheating on income tax or cutting corners in business transactions or trying to take advantage of somebody who is desperately selling something and needs the money badly. So I say that is my principle. I uphold it. Why? Because it's very convenient for me. No, I don't need the money. I've got tons of money. On the other hand, there's a person who's always been short of money, who's been struggling, who's got a family to look after. <clears throat> now, if he starts doing these things, would you say that they are immoral or they are, you know, wrong in terms of values and uh, principles? If he cuts down on his income tax or if he, you know, Bends corners here and uh, there, we won't be able to you know, understand the difference. But you, I want you to please keep this in mind. And why I want you to keep this in mind is something very, very uh, important. And that is that when you <clears throat> follow certain principles, when you make certain habits ingrained into you, which are non-negotiable, whatever happens, 
I am not going to budge because I'm convinced that this is a matter of basic principles and values and ethics. When I do that, as I told you, initially, people may not like me also. People may say, oh, he's trying to be super smart. He's trying to be this and that. And maybe he's a hypocrite. Maybe he's doing things behind which, you know, he doesn't show and all these things. They may say certain things. But what happens is that over a period of time, there is a ripple effect. If I'm consistent, people do understand the value of it. Keep that in mind as I take my one minute break and I will be back within a minute. Good morning to all. Yeah, last from last week break, we are back here. How are you all? Yeah, I can see a few questions and uh, good morning messages. Very nice to see that. And uh, usually 11 o'clock when we log in, I share the link also. In case, you know, if your loved ones or your friends or even in the family, if they would like to watch, kindly to share with them also. So even they can join with us. They can hear such many things here. And one nice thing is today, I'm so excited also, we are having an alumni meet, our 2022 batch. All our students are here from morning. And, uh, you know, nice time. And I had to come here and sit with Alisa, but my, all my mind is there. We are having a very nice time there, where, you know, all four batches people have come and uh, till afternoon, this first half, they're going to be there here. It's nice to see, you know, all of them coming and with their nice smiles, talking to us. They feel so happy. Uh, and we feel so happy hearing, you know, they say that this is our second home. We come here, we feel very nice. And today there was no traffic. Usually at classes, we had all that. And uh, one more thing is I just wanted to inform you that our counselors have started coming here and we are having one-to-one -one counseling apart from telecounseling also anybody who is interested who wanted career counseling usually now it's the time after uh, CET, NEET and all that so who would like to come and have the career counseling please do share our numbers i will be putting it in the chat box and our dcs admissions have started and we can see people coming and inquiring and uh, uh, you know, knowing more about this course. So whoever is interested, I can share the prospectus with them. If you could kindly share our office numbers and our uh, inquiry number for the uh, course. So not only that, we have our CCAD course, we have our uh, life skills, Youngs for Children, which is online now because we already completed the offline course here. And uh, there were so many people, parents who wanted online so we have start we'll be starting with that i can share all the details with you i will share our numbers in the chat box kindly note down and share it with them thank you thank you anis that gives me that little break to enjoy my hot cup of uh, tea and i am back uh, with you and as you know in the second half i enjoy reading your comments responding to them, learning from them. So the first one comes up and Anis is putting it on. It is from Asha. Well, dicey situation does arise in life. True. Will not having a conversation with near and dear ones suffice when a person has to stand by his or her principles and values 
and leaves it to the dear ones to ponder over. Yes, Asha, I agree with you that that should be the first you know, option. Whenever you have people who are close to you, what we refer to as near and dear, communication is the first pillar of a good close relationship. So you must talk it over. The dicey situation, as you said, arises if they don't agree with you. I gave the example of the son telling the father, why can't you put in a word so that I'll get a job? And the father says, no, I uphold certain dignity and respect among society and these people. I don't want to go to them and say that, you know, give a job to my uh, son. So who is right? Who is wrong? You decide. Ah, Asha also says value can also mean commodity value. Similarly, can principle be a commodity? No, principles cannot be a commodity. Asha, that's why I said even when I mentioned values of giving, let us not you know confuse it with values of giving charity or doing philanthropy. That is a completely different uh, thing, right? Okay. Surekha, good to have you. How do we practice our values when two priorities, both right, are conflicting with each other? When it's right versus right, yes. We have to face such situations, isn't it? Where I feel this is also right and that is also right. I'm pulled in two different directions. Normally, what I do if I am in a situation like this is, I bounce it off one or two good friends or you know, respected friends whom I hold in dear esteem. And I ask them that if you are in this position, what would you do? Generally, I do get answers. If I don't, then you know what? I've spoken on this topic earlier also. I go by my gut feeling, my intuition. This is right. That is also right. But my intuition is saying that the first rise is better than the second or vice versa. That's what I do. I leave it to you people how you would like to handle it. Surekha also says peace of mind comes when your life is in harmony with true principles and values and in no other uh, uh, way. When we practice our principles, we sleep better. Very true. That is one uh, thing. In fact, you know, uh, one of our old students who was an income tax officer and she used to go on these raids. She was sitting and talking to the wife of a filthy rich man who was being raided by the income tax department. And she was explaining these basic things. You know, she was literally counseling that lady. And that lady said, go behind this and go under that uh, basement. You will find more, you know, hidden money there. So she was surprised. She said, why are you telling me this? She said, because I think if you take away that money, my husband will sleep better. He's all the time worried about his undisclosed money, his, you know, black money, those notes lying over there. So you take it away, I think he will sleep better. This is a real life example. Okay. Hmm. Haji, Saraf Saab from Maharashtra is always with us. I always have a pleasure in welcoming him. He says, principles and values seem to be ideal for a layman. But when it comes in common man's life to practice it, People find excuses. So values and principles should be practiced in life only when he, she deserves it. Yes, sir, sir, that does give a lot of food for uh, uh, thought that one can never be ideal. One cannot be a Mahatma Gandhi or a Mother Teresa. We have to understand our uh, limitations, our commitments to our near and dear, our fears of, you know, going at rubbing up people in authority, all that has to be taken into account. I agree with you. Ha, Asha says, speaking of cutting corners in the income tax, but easier said than even done. For the most principle, I will listen to the response. Later, as I have a dear friend who has just uh, 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 dropped, yes, whether it is income tax, whether it is, you know, picking up some money which is lying uh, on the road which uh, does not belong to anybody. But there are so many areas where there are gray areas, you know, where people say even a simple thing like a person is parking his car where there is a no parking sign. And he says, 
See, there's a row of cars. Everybody is parking. So what if I park? In fact, they even argue with the policeman. There are so many people who have parked. You are not telling them. Why are you telling uh, me? These are all things which we have to take it in our stride. But we have to decide individually what type of life we are going to lead. Okay. Roshan says, I have seen a lady in Kur who has values in giving. So compassionate, kind, selfless service to one and all. She also has a sense of humor at the same time. Her quality of work is superb. She can be completely trusted in whatever she is doing. I'm very lucky to be associated with such a wonderful person. Yes, Roshan. Whenever we come across such a person, and they're very rare in this world, we should cherish them. Not only we should, you know, increase our contact and our association with them, we should also spread the word like how you have done that there are such people. It gives all of us that little boost that, yes, life is good. Whenever I'm facing people, you know, who are cruel, who are insensitive or who are corrupt and all that, when I come across such people or hear about them even, I feel a little more positive that the world is a good place. Vinita says, Ali, I feel as parents, we have a huge responsibility. We need to practice our principles and values than just telling our children or, in fact, to anyone. Yes, I keep on reminding all parents that children are very poor at listening to their parents. They are very good at mimicking them. What you do has a much greater impact than what you tell them. Please always keep that in mind particularly if you've got growing children in your house. Roshan says, all my principles and values come from my dear father who has made me who I am. Exactly. That is what I was just telling you, Roshan, that we imbibe these things from our parents, our elders, our teachers and all. So if you and many of us have been lucky that we had such people in our life, even if they are no more, we should cherish the fact that they have left this legacy behind for us. Hmm. Surekha says, vision without values can create a Hitler. Very true. Vision with values can create a Gandhi. Wonderful quote. Surekha, I'm going to note this down and I'm going to, you know, quote this to uh, people. You have brought out a wonderful uh, proverb. I always say that, you know, our own people sometimes speak such words of wisdom, which we don't bother. But what Surekha has said just now. I'm going to keep it in mind and I'm going to repeat it with Surika's permission. Navina says, as you rightly pointed out, it's best to follow those values, which is a win-win situation for both and is for the larger good of everyone. Those of you who have been Rotarians will uh, uh, re recall that there is a four-way test which is always given to the Rotary members. I don't remember the exact four uh, these things, but you can find out from any Rotarian. There are four questions that you need to ask yourself before you take any action or before you form an attitude. If those four you can answer truthfully and satisfactorily, you know that you are on the right track. Nitya says, should we compromise our values and principles to accommodate our loved ones? That's a very dicey question, Nitya. And we have to, from case to case, situation to situation, take certain decisions. Sometimes we may have to bend our values a little bit to oblige our child or our loved ones. Sometimes we can afford to be very strict. But most important is at every point and at every decision, you have to question which at this juncture or at this moment would be the right thing. As long as there is no irreversible damage to the other person, I would stick to my principles. Ah, Diksha says, sometimes people preach, but they don't practice. This can create confusion. The world is full of such uh, people, Diksha. We, left, right and center, we come across people who only keep uh, uh, preaching and they do not uh, uh, you know, uh, practice. There was a very good joke which a priest had told me, in fact. There were two brothers. You know, One was a doctor and one was a priest. They had the same name, let's say Johnson. One day somebody came and knocked on their door. And one of the brothers opened the door. And the visitor asked, are you Mr. Johnson? He said, yes. Uh, are you the Johnson who preaches? He wanted to know whether I'm talking to the priest Johnson. He said, no, 
I am the Johnson who practices because he was a doctor. Right. Lakshmi says, my values from my Aji. Yes, that's how we learn. You may have an Aji, you may have a grandfather, you may have so many people, you may have a teacher. Some of the most, you know, so-called uh, invisible teachers who just do their, you know, duty and commitment and their love for their children. But they leave behind such wonderful values and principles for us. Rina says, sense of humor and kindness are the main good factors for a long life. Yes, you are right, Rina. Sense of humor is a barometer of how good your mental health is, how well you can take up uh, you know, challenges. And kindness, of course, nobody can deny. Even if you know that that other person is not going to reciprocate, that other person is not very good to you, if you can rise above that and say, it is in my you know, trait or my characteristics to be kind, I'm not going to be governed by how much kindness the other person gives uh, me. Vinita says, actually, what our parents did have left a deep impact on our minds, which I realized today. All those values and principles which I have learned in my childhood. Thanks, Vinita, for highlighting this. I would also request all of us to follow Vinita's pattern. That is, someday, maybe tomorrow is a Sunday, if you have some free time, sit down and start listing out the good things which your parents or grandparents have imbibed into you. Even if they are no more, it doesn't matter. What you need to do is to understand that what you are today, a lot of it is to do with your upbringing. And if your upbringing included good values, good principles and good ethics, you are a very fortunate person. Navina says it's best to review one's values from time to time and let go and imbibe new. That's right, Navina. Good you reminded uh, that we can't be rigid as to this is what I was doing 10 years back, 20 years back. So I will continue. We have to move with times. We have to change. I gave you an example right in the beginning of, let's say, the type of dressing which, uh, you know, youngsters uh, uh, wear. Over a period of time, if I grow old, I may not like the idea because... In my days, youngsters never used to wear that. But so, so what? That doesn't mean that what they are doing is immoral or unethical. I have to rise above that and to introspect and look inward rather than looking at them and criticizing uh, them. These are very, very important uh, uh, things. I'm glad that so many of you brought out such wonderful, you know, food for thought. Many of your, uh, you know, comments, questions, have actually, I'm sure, to those of us who have been paying attention to it, have really caused uh, this thing. In fact, this is one session where I would request many of you, when you have the time, to just run through the second half later at your convenience and jot down some of the very nice you know, comments and uh, words of wisdom which some of you have uh, brought out so that we can all share and we can all enjoy with this uh, you know, uh, thing. There is a lot that can be uh, done in this. Uh, I will close up by giving you a very interesting example, which I use sometimes in my, you know, management uh, uh, training. There was this gentleman, let's say his name was John. He was a salesman in a company and he used to get a commission for every sale. He went to a particular prospective customer and said that I would like to sell my product uh, to you. That gentleman said, that you have to give me a commission, a break. He came back and told his boss. His boss said, no, we do not give bribes for, you know, uh, creating a sale. Doesn't matter if you have to lose it. But it was a very good uh, prospective customer. They would get very good, uh, you know, uh, uh, returns, a very good uh, turnover. And John would get a very good commission. So he thought over it. He went and spoke to this gentleman, what do you want? He said, I want a fancy watch which causes 50,000 rupees. You buy that and give it to me, I'll give you the order. John calculated and realized that he is going to earn 80,000 commission if that deal goes through. He says, it's worth it. I'll get my brownie points that I got such a good uh, you know, customer. My bosses will be happy with me and I'll still be making 30,000. So he went to the watch company. 
he didn't have money he took a loan from a money lender and he went and he was buying that 50000 rupee watch the boss's secretary was passing by and she saw john an ordinary salesman is buying a 50000 rupee watch so where is he getting this type of money uh, from she came and informed the boss that there's something wrong with john john has got so much money to uh, splurge on fancy watches the boss called john and told him sorry we don't need you anymore we are going to dismiss you john came back to his table and saw a message from the prospective customer saying we have found another vendor we are no longer interested in your product can you imagine what he went through but the reason why i told this is ask yourself truthfully was john holding principles or bending them was that secretary who came and uh, you know informed the boss was she showing loyalty to the company or was she being you know unprincipled by you know telling things about her uh, colleague was that customer right in demanding that uh, watch was the boss right firstly in refusing to uh, you know adjust and give that uh, uh, gift to the customer and secondly just because his secretary came and told this was he right in throwing him uh, out so many questions these are what com comes in daily life there is no clear cut line of right and wrong it is never in black and white we have to face life and its challenges by all these good uh, you know things so that is what i wanted to tell you please go ahead and think about it you know as navina says we will enrich and empower ourselves when we open ourselves and mingle in cross cultures yes navina i agree with you and i would exhort this to all of you that whenever possible you know look beyond your immediate culture your immediate family your immediate way of thinking and understand that other people also have diverse opinions handling this diversity really broadens your uh, uh, you know horizons so with that as i told you that uh, once we you know deal with all the comments and questions that we come we will not unnecessarily hold you up exactly to the point of 12 o'clock we will wind up and let you spend some saturday time either on your own or with your family or even introspecting on what we have thought of so please take a few minutes particularly today's topic to introspect if not today whenever you get time introspect on some of the things that have been discussed some of the very nice words that have come from you people itself and try to do things so that you can improve your quality of life now i am going to see you next uh, uh, saturday with a topic which is very very uh, you know what do you call it uh, getting uh, uh, popular these days you are hearing this word gas lighters i'm not referring to uh, you know lighting your stove in the kitchen you all know what i'm talking about people who manipulate your emotions to make you feel guilty it's a very important topic all of us should know how to deal with gas lighters so that's what we are going to be discussing next saturday on 13th may at 11 o'clock